Welcome, friends, for a devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bibles once again. Turn with me to the book of Philemon. Philemon, we began here a couple of days ago. We've been learning some things about this book. If you have not uh, already watched the previous two devotionals, I encourage you to go back and watch them before you uh, watch this one so you get the backstory of what's going on in the book of Philemon. As we come into the, the verses that we are looking at today, we see that Paul praises Philemon, and that is something that we can very well learn. Paul's got some things that are on his heart that he wants to communicate with Philemon and talk to Philemon about. But one of the things that we see here in this book is this. Whenever we have something negative that needs to be dealt with, we are wise to compliment before we criticize. And that's exactly what Philemon or Paul does with Philemon here. And uh, so often when you've got a negative that you need to talk to somebody about, start out with a positive. Don't start out with a negative. Start out with a positive, then talk about the negative, talk about what needs to be talked about, and then end your conversation on a positive once again. Make sure that you are talking to that person because you sincerely want to help them and you are concerned for them, not just because you have a holier-than-thou attitude or that you like being critical of other people. So as we come into Philemon chapter 1, obviously, verses 4 through 7, we see Paul's praise of Philemon here, and there's a couple of things that are going to be brought out to us uh, as we look at these verses. Notice in Philippians or Philemon 1:4, I thank my God, making mention of ye, of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by the brother. So first of all, we see in verses 4 and 5 that Paul praises Philemon's character. And then in verses 6 and 7, he praises Philemon's communication. As we look at him praising Philemon's character, notice first of all that he tells Philemon that he was a cause of thanks and prayers. It says, in verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Frank, can I say today that you have no business criticizing somebody that you have not spent much time in praying for? Um, if I'm going to just have a critical spirit toward somebody, and I've never spent any time with them in prayer, then truly I am not being critical because of the fact that I care about them. I'm just being critical because of the fact that I like being critical, that I like to try to make other people think that I'm better than them or whatever it is. But friends, we have no business in talking about anything negative about uh, with somebody. Notice you don't talk about somebody. If you got something that's negative about someone, you go talk to that individual. We're known in the day and age that we live in that we talk to everybody else but the person that we have the problem with. But friends, before you ever get to the place that you desire to talk to them, spend much time in prayer about that individual. Make sure that your heart is right before God. And certainly make sure that your attitude is right before that person. And Paul says here in verse 4, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayer. There was something that was an item of concern that Paul wanted to talk to Philemon about, but he was still able to write to him and say, listen, I thank my God for you. I thank my God for the relationship and the fellowship that we have, Philemon. And he says, I want you to know that I make mention of thee always in my prayers. Frank, can I encourage you, whenever you have a whenever you have a, uh, a hunch to put somebody down, put them down on your prayer list. Put them at the place that you are going to be involved in praying for them. It is hard to be critical of others in a negative way if we are honestly and earnestly praying for that individual. So here he says, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. Frank, can I encourage you today? Pick especially the people that are in the church that you are a part of. Put them down on your prayer list. And let's get involved, if you're not already, let's get involved in diligently praying for the people that go to your church on a regular basis. One of the benefits of being part of a smaller church is that you can pray for each individual in that church by names and by name. And many times you even know some of the struggles that they're facing, some of the things their families are going through. And let's be at the place so we can honestly say 
to our brothers and sisters in Christ, especially those who are nearest to us, I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers. What a blessing and an encouragement it is to me when somebody says, I'm praying for you, or you're on my prayer list. And that's what Paul does to Philemon. And then we see in verse 5 that Philemon was known for his love and for his faith. He says, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all saints. Now, we learn some things here. We learn, first of all, that if I'm going to love the saints the way I need to love the saints, that I need to love God first the way that I'm supposed to love him. Notice he puts in this verse in the order that he first of all loved God and then he loved the saints. And that love was not just something that he talked about. That love is something that was shown. And we see here that he was known for his love and his faith. Uh, hearing of thy love and faith, which thou hast to Lord, Lord the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you today, how is your love toward the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you honestly say that you love him more today than you have ever loved him before in your life? Is your love for him growing? Or would you have to say with the Ephesians, as Paul wrote, to, or as God wrote to them in Revelation chapter 2, that they had left their first love? He says, I know of thy love toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says also your faith in Christ. How's your faith in Christ today? Are you trusting him more today than you ever have before? Are you leaning upon him? Are you acknowledging your need of him in your life and the fact that without him you can do nothing? Right now I'm preaching a revival meeting and we're reminded in this revival meeting, we're looking at Psalm 27, that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Notice what David says next. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Friends, can you honestly say today, that the Lord is the strength of your life. And then we see Paul's communication, in, or Philemon's communication in verses 6 and 7. Notice that Paul prayed that Philemon's faith might be communicated to others in verse 6. That the communication of thy faith, that word communication means sharing, the fellowship of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. You know what Paul's saying there? He's saying, it's my desire that people would see the faith that you have in Christ. That they would see the reality of that faith in Christ. Let me remind you of a couple of verses as we think about that. First of all, in James chapter 2, verse 14, we don't have time to go into this in great detail, but if you have any questions as to what James is talking about here, I encourage you to go to my YouTube channel and search out James chapter 2. It's in the James folder, and there we deal with this su this subject in detail. But notice what he says in James 2, verse 14 and verse 17. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works, can faith save him? Verse 17, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dig, being alone. People cannot see my faith. God knows my faith, but people can't see my faith. The only thing that people can see is the works that that faith generates in my life. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Friends, I need to think properly if my faith is going to be communicated properly to the people that I come in contact with. Then in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, it says this, Beside this, giving all diligence, he says, be diligent about this, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. And then in verse 8, for these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, listen, you'll not be barren, you'll not be unfruitful if you add these things. And it's interesting in 2 Peter 1, verses 5 through 8, excuse me, to look at the list there and compare it with the fruit of the Spirit that he's given in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But if we add to these things, our faith is going to be communicated. People around us will see our faith. And we're almost at a time today. But notice also Paul's uh, Philemon's love for the saints. This was mentioned... 
uh, in verse 5, thy love toward all the saints. And we mentioned the fact that if I'm going to love the saints properly, I need to love God properly first. But then notice Philemon's love for the saints in verse 7. He says, for we have great joy and consolation in our uh, in thy love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by the brother. You know what he says? He says, the love that you have toward the saints is a love that refreshes their hearts. And uh, once again, we see that term of endearment when he says the bowels of the saints are refreshed by the brother. Friends, how is your love toward God and toward the saints? Oh, there's so much that we can learn as we come into this passage. Have a great day.